Hello everybody, this is the Praetorian again. And, um, on my last, uh, my last, uh, video, I, uh, was discussing some things that had occurred before about my ex and my son, and I, there was a few things that I left out that I probably, that I figured I should probably do another video to clear some things up. Um, this really it does it or it really is this really is a topic that uh, concerns my problems with uh, socialism and the reason why I'm against you know welfare state or against the welfare state and socialist reforms and things that are taking place in our country okay um, the thing that you have to understand about me and my relationship with my ex is, uh, see, I've been sober since 2003. I've gone through recovery program for drugs and alcohol. On my, in my third year of being sober, I did a common mistake that most people in recovery do. do. I went back to, uh, my ex and I ended up getting in a relationship with her. Now, for anybody who has a desire to have a relationship while trying to straighten their life up and clean the, their act up, I suggest that you don't do it. It's a bad idea. There's no mental health in bending down at the foot of somebody else's bed praying to a god while they're wanting to get drunk or high. And that was the case with me. <clears throat> See, I was trying to sober up, and she wasn't. Um, that ended up in me being involved with her in a really, really bad relationship for about six months. Which, in the process, she ended up getting pregnant. Well, needless to say, she had the baby, and I ended up... Going, or we ended up going our separate ways and there was threats made against me and my family which consisted of if we went out to see my son we would be arrested for trespassing because see, she lives like 15 or 20 miles way out in the middle of nowhere and they have like maybe one con a convenience store or general store where they can go to and get get food and things like that but that's about it and they have a school for that goes up to the eighth grade and from then on they get bussed out into Benton Illinois which is a bigger uh, town um, the whole point of what I'm trying to say is because of this and the fact that she was able to get away with that and I couldn't do anything about it even though the law says that I can the police won't take any action but even though I couldn't, or even though I couldn't do any of that, you know, I uh, end up getting a uh, summons to show up for court one day. Um, cop comes knocking on my door, hands me a summons, and I uh, get the summons, and it tells me that, you know, my ex, she uh, decided that she was going to take some prescription medicines and go into a blackout and try to cut her wrists in front of my son. Well, from the documentation, it was only her and him that was there. And it to me, it sounds like he ended up calling, you know, the ambulances or the ambulance to come and check her out. So they go out there and they check her out and DCFS is called onto the scene. There was also a police officer. So you have the EMTs, you have the police, and you have a DCFS officer that shows up on the scene that it happens. From everything I've read, not one time did they take my son into 24-hour custody to have him examined to make sure that he was okay, that he didn't have any kind of substance in him that could be harmful. They didn't do any of that. They kept trying to contact her after that, and uh, she kept avoiding them. She wouldn't uh, stand up and take action, you know, and, and try to be responsible. They uh, 
turned around and asked her when they finally did talk to her about me and I'm guessing that they turned around, she turned around and told them that I was nowhere to be found even though I live maybe 20 25 miles away from her I'm less than a 10 minute drive from the courthouse that I had to go to you know during these hearings and they took her word for it and uh, allowed a waiver for a diligent search for the father that really got on my nerves um, the, then it got even worse whenever I finally got the summons and I showed up for court the judge didn't know that I got summons the prosecuting attorney didn't know that I got summons nobody in that court knew that the courthouse knew that I got a summons they had no idea where it came from so I have this mysterious summons that shows up a year after the incident I uh, turn around and I start checking into it and I find out that they are only supposed to do an investigation for up to 10 months and I uh, found out that this took longer it took almost a year before I was even summoned to court and then they turn around and they did nothing when it came to checking my son out for for his welfare you know to see if he had chemicals in his system 24 hours whatever you know um, I asked for information concerning the case I was told that I didn't have the right to those um, I was also freaking uh, cooperative with them at first I told them I would do whatever it took to help and they they were okay with that but then when I started getting static I said look man I want custody of my son I was like, this is getting out of hand, you know. Every time my ex would go into court and the district attorney was talking, she would always mention the fact that that they wanted her to have a strong box where she could put her pills in and her uh, counselor could uh, monitor how, many, uh, how much medication she has and if any of it was taken. She couldn't do that. Um, mysteriously, her medicine was gone or disappeared, or, and she just wouldn't cooperate. Um, it got even worse. She started blaming her oldest son, not my son, but her oldest son, of stealing her medication, calling him a thief. And not one time did they bring this boy into court so that he could either defend himself or admit that he had done it. They just took his word for it, her, or her word for it. Um, then, after that, it started dawning on me that they weren't putting her through any recovery programs. They weren't telling her, look, you have a problem. You need to go take care of it. They go to treatment and go to an eight-month program or, you know, a, a one-year program, something that would, you know, help her to sober up. All they wanted her to do was take her medicine and put it in a strong box. That was it. Nothing else. Um, and according to DCFS regulations, if drugs are involved, that's automatically what they should be doing. And they weren't doing it. But from my take of it, you know, they see this white woman living out in the middle of the country with a beautiful scenery of the country and oh there can't be any problems there you know this is just a one-time mistake and that just started pissing me off because i'll tell you what if you want to know about some crazy stuff going on you just start reading about the dcfs and things that are happening it would completely amaze you um well needless to say they turn around and they uh wanted to allow or they allowed me to have uh, one week visitations and I ended up going to every single one week visitation the counselor was really really nice but she wouldn't give me information like I said when I asked about it and uh, it got to the point where I uh, told them that I wanted custody of my son and they wanted to come in and check my house <clears throat> and I'm like why do you need to check my house well we want to set this up if you're willing to 
let us uh, check your house, we would be willing to do it. And I said, well, let me talk to my son first. <clears throat> and if he agrees with it, then I'll say, okay. I go and I talk to him about it, and he was fine with it. And I turn around and I freaking started listening to what they were telling me. And I was like, hold on a minute. No, I don't want to do that up. You know, because I, I started figuring out what it was. It was a trap. They wanted to come into my house and find something wrong with my house so that I could I would be denied, you know, anything. And so after that, I turned around. Everything went downhill. And whenever it came down to the final part of it, what it was is they couldn't legally take away my custody because I didn't commit no crime. I didn't do anything wrong. They took away my ex-girlfriend's custody which I thought was strange because it wasn't a criminal law, uh, criminal case apparently the juvenile courts now can take and bring a parent into court on civil cases and sue them for the custody of their children instead of making it a criminal case and uh, I did find that out and that is a fact if people aren't aware when it's civil, that means that you're suing somebody over probate. They're calling my son property, okay? And that's what they they consider it. But anyhow, that's what they did. They couldn't do that to me either because I did no wrong. And instead of taking away my custody, what they did is they gave guardianship over to my ex's parents who lived two houses down from her, okay? Then, after they did that, they allowed them to have complete and absolute say over it. After that happened, I lost my weekly visits. They don't want me around. They were talking real nice and everything while they were being investigated, but after that, I wasn't allowed to visit. I haven't heard from them since. Um, that's one of the reasons why I have an issue with it, you know what I mean? Um, these laws are aimed at protecting the custodial parent and completely leaving out any kind of protection for the non-custodial parents. And see, I've never been married. I've had two, two sons out of marriage, and that is especially bad because right now our laws are set up to where you have to be married to have rights if you're not married and you have children out of wedlock you're screwed and i said that in my last uh not my last video too and i really mean that and i gave warnings to young men who are out there you know wanting to play the game you better wear a condom or you better freaking not have sex and i mean that because you'll go down a road that you've never gone down before, and it's horrible. If you think getting in trouble with the law is bad, try getting in trouble over a woman. And I, I'll tell you what, a woman will be the worst trouble you will ever find your entire life. So, um, I just wanted to point that out. Um, and let everybody know, you know, that this is a serious, serious issue. Here later, I'll, I'll make a commentary on, you know, my experiences with the DCFS and everything because I'm a part of a group that <clears throat> uh, does post about that stuff. And if you're interested in that, I'll put the link of it. It's uh, on Google Plus. And they're, they're good people. I just didn't want you guys thinking that I was some crazy psycho dad, you know, that is uh, wanting to get revenge because of uh, custody problems which in a way I guess I am it, it made me mad but there's other issues that are involved too it kind of inspired me to, to think this way well, I'm gonna get off of here I will talk to you guys later if you want to comment comment I'm glad to listen maybe even comment back bye